All right, welcome back to the Dart Language Tour Annotated Documentation. Uh, today we're going over the built-in types, specifically strings. All right, these are really important. These are used everywhere in Dart and in Flutter. So what is a string? A Dart string, which is a string object, okay, capital S, it holds a sequence of UTF-16 code units. This is a lot of different uh, characters, okay? I mean, we can go take a look. Um, over a million valid character code points, okay? From the English alphabet to, I assume, like a bunch of different languages, okay? So it holds a lot. All right, um, meaning you don't have to like get some other special type of string thing. Like this is this is going to cover, I think, most of the uh, cases where you need to represent a, a code point or a character um, strung together to make a giant string. All right, you can use either single or double quotes to create a string. All right, so these are our string literals. Okay. Let's just plug these into main.dart and play with them real quick, and we'll format these. Okay, so we can print S1. Let's see what that looks like. So a single quoted string, that's a string literal. That works. Okay, these info, uh, they're not warnings, they're just information um, <laughs> messages. Okay, so S2 is double. Okay, so single or double, uh, you can't intermix them. So if I wanted to do uh, a double quote on one side and a single quote on the other side, you can't do that. Okay, but a, a string of characters um, surrounded by double quotes is going to be uh, a valid string. So S1 and S2 are valid strings. Um, sometimes you need to escape special units, or, or special characters, sorry. Um, and I think you use double quotes for that. Let's see. So S3 is single quotes. Um, oh, yeah. okay. So this is this is actually I think escaping it. So here we we're saying it's easy to escape the string delimiter. Okay. So if I didn't have this escape character, which is a a backslash, you see how it messes everything up. So if I want to literally print a single quote in a single quoted string, I have to use that escape character, okay? And it printed over here um, like that. So that's the the way to do that. Um, in S4, here we've got, okay, double quotes. Now here we don't have to escape it, right? Because uh, the double quotes is going to treat the single quote as a um, just a regular string on its own, okay? It's even easier to use the other delimiter, but if for some reason we wanted to, in quotes, say it's quote unquote easier to use the other delimiter. Okay, now we have to use that backslash to escape these guys. All right, so now it's even quote easier to use the other delimiter. Okay. So that's a quick introduction to single and double quotes and how to escape characters. Let's go back here. All right, you can put the value of an expression inside a string by using, so what is an expression? An expression is logic that evaluates to something. Um, so that's string interpolation of an expression. If you just wanted to do um, a variable, there, there's a way to do that as well. Okay. So if the expression is an identifier, you can skip the uh, the double curly braces, okay? To get the string corresponding to an object, Dart calls the objects to string method to get the string corresponding. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Um, in a previous video, I had talked about asserts. These don't really work in Dartpad, okay? And so that's why we're going to um, we're just going to print things, okay? Uh, so let's let's do that. Let's let's stick with what we've got here, okay? So we have s we have these s ones uh, through four. Let's say s one string interpolation. Um, 
you know, let's just plop it right here between work and well. So because this is an identifier, var is an identifier, meaning this is not an expression, it's just a, a, like a variable assignment, we can just interpolate s right there. And when we print it, it should say single quotes work string interpolation well for string literals. Okay, let's run that. Single quotes work string interpolation well. So it just plopped in that variable right where we told it to. Okay. If you had something else like um, you wanted to do some math, now we need these curly braces to do that. All right. So now it's going to say single quotes work too well for string literals. Single quotes work too well for string literals. Okay, so um, let's go back here to read this language. You can put the value of an expression inside a string, which we just did, by using the dollar sign to, to start the interpolation, and then we wrapped the expression in curly braces. Um, if an expression is an identifier, var, final, const, you can skip um, the expression evaluation. <laughs> Okay, now this sentence is, is pretty interesting. To get the string corresponding to an object. So now it's, it's, it's trying to tell us, the documentation is telling us, under the hood, how does this work? Um, it it kind of makes sense to, like if we wanted to interpolate this and have string interpolation, this, this string literal plopped into this overall string here, um, it kind of just does it, and we expect a string to just be plopped into a string. But what if it was a, um, a Boolean, like true? Okay, how does it know to, um, to turn the true Boolean into string quotes work true well? So we just interpolated that there, and this is a string representation of the true Boolean. How does it know to do that? Well, it kind of does this under the hood. It kind of says two strings. So you see how I, I did dot on that um, identifier s on that variable? I have these options. Okay. So now I'm running an expression. Okay. So this is how it knows under the hood to do that. But as could you imagine if you had to interpolate only expressions? Uh, and you had to call string on everything, you know, maybe it's null. Okay. Okay, so now to string on null, taking a while. Okay, it turns that into a string, the string representation of null. Um, but it's kind of a, um, a convenience to not have to include the expression and just let Dart figure it out for us. Because what that's going to do, as I just said, Dart calls the objects toString method. So this toString method exists on a lot of objects, and we get that, as they say, for free out of the box. <laughs> it's, quote, baked into um, a lot of the, the, um, the classes and objects in Dart. Okay? So that's, um, that's an important thing to, to realize. Um, it does that for us, but now you know how you can do that on your own using the expression curly braces. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. So if you if you look at some of these these strings, it's just saying like, hey, are these things true? I mean, we could we could just go through these real quick, and, and instead of saying assert, which does nothing, um, we'll just print the comparison. So let's format that again. This doesn't really really work. So what I want to do is I will say print. Okay, so it's interpolating S there, and we're expecting to, to equal this thing, right? So if we print that is equal to that, that should be true. Okay, so what it's doing is it's, um, it's kind of spitting out like, hey, is this thing equal to this thing? If that's hard to see. Let me bring this back over. 
Okay, they did that on multiple lines. Um, okay, so there's my string on the right, there's my string on the left. We're comparing the two strings. Okay, and, and, and that's true. Uh, another example is this one, so I'm going to comment out this earlier one. Um, so even if we do the expression on it, okay, so it's just going to to uppercase that entire string and do that, uh, that should be true as well. And it is. Okay. Awesome. So it says note the, the double equals operator test whether the two objects are equivalent. So those two strings, they, they printed out the same string in both cases, so they were equivalent. And that's why we got true. Uh, so they contained the same sequence of code units. Okay, and, and a code unit is basically like, you know, that first T, that's a code unit. That H, that's a code unit. A, that's a code unit. Um, there might be a way, oops, there might be a way to look at code units. I'm not sure off the top of my head, though. Let's see if I can figure that out. Let's say S dot code units. Okay, that's cool. Let's, let's print that. Um, does that work? What error does this give us? Does it? No. Okay. So the code units, so the code unit for S, okay, is 115. And because it's in an alphabet, right, T comes after S, that's why we get 116. R is before S, that's why we get 114. So this is a list or an array of the code units representing each string that we see on the screen. So under the hood, um, closer to you know the machine, the metal, closer to the metal. Oops. Uh, thank you, Mac trackpad. Um, it's going to print out the code units that represent these strings that we as humans read. Okay. So that's that's what those code units are. Two strings are equivalent if they contain the same sequence of code units. Okay. Now sometimes we need to build strings together. Uh, here's that example. You can concatenate strings. To concatenate means to put them together, okay, like, like building blocks, one on top of the other. Or in this case, because it's like a sequence of strings, it's like one next to the other one. Um, so you can use adjacent string literals. So these are literally just like kind of whether they're on new lines or not, you put them next to each other, and they're going to automatically concatenate. Um, or you can use the plus operator, okay? Which is like this example down here. Okay, let's show that real quick. Okay, here we go, and format. Okay, so let's just um, let's print. Uh, is S1 equal to string concatenation? Concatenation works even over line breaks. That should be true. Okay, it is. There we go. And over here, uh, var S2. Now we're using the plus operator, so we have one string. The plus operator works well, works as well. And notice how they leave a space here, because when you concatenate it, you want that space to be there in the final product. Um, is S2 equal to what we think it is here? And that's also going to be true once it finishes running, 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 true. Okay. So that's the example of concatenation. Um, another way to create a multi-line string, use a triple quote with either single or double quotation marks. Okay, here we go. Let's plug this in and see what it looks like. Let's format it. Okay, so yeah. Um, so my background is Ruby, and in Ruby we do something that's like, um, that looks like this if I'm remembering correctly off the top of my head. You have something that's like a here doc, is what they call that, okay? And then you close it, and then any strings in here would become concatenated strings. Okay, so this is kind of what it looks like in, in Ruby. 
um, you might hear this term here doc to refer to multi-line strings. Okay, so that's what it kind of looks like there. Um, so if we print S1 here, we're expecting it to say you can create multi-line strings like this one. Now if there's no space after create that we can't see, it's going to put those smack dab together. Okay, so let's print that. Oh, look at that. So that, that was kind of unexpected. I was expecting it to bring it all into one line, but it actually literally did a multi-line string. And I think that's true for the here docs as well. So I probably misspoke a second ago. Okay. Um, let's see if we have a an apostrophe. What does that do? Does that print the literal apostrophe? It does. Okay. Um, if I want to escape that. Okay, so I don't think it has any bearing on multi-line strings, whether you use a double, or sorry, a, a single or double quote. Okay, so let's comment that out. Let's look at S2 here. Print S2. So this is also, also a multi-line string. Um, so whether you start it there or you start there. So here's an interesting point. Look at this. I had leading white space, and it translated it over here. Um, so going back to our, our Ruby example, um, like so, we have like here doc. And you can use other words. You could say capital foo. It's just some some expression to identify that what's going on in between here. Now I think the earliest versions of Ruby, if you did it like this, it would it would include that that white space, right? Um, but something like this, uh, it would kind of ignore the white space uh, up front. Okay, so it would kind of treat it all as one. Uh, that way, when you're in your code, you know how Flutter, you can have these nested trees? Well, if you use this and you have that indentation, you're going to end up with, if you really didn't want the indentation and you use the multi-line tick marks like this, you're going to end up with a big nested widget, but then your strings are going to be all the way to the left, and it's going to look really, really strange. Okay. So think about that um, when you're using these things. I don't know if they have a way to strip out the white space so that you can format it as you want to. Okay, I don't know that there's a way to do that in Dart. Okay, because this could actually mess up your widget. All of a sudden, you have all that white space, which these are real code points, you know, that are being printed. Okay. So um, just remember that when you're using the, the multi-line um, single or double quotes, okay? Three of them, three leading, three um, at the end. All right, so next in the language tour, we're talking about a raw string. When they, when they use this, this term raw, it basically means that you're not able to escape characters, okay? Normally, um, we'll just look at this. I'm going to paste this in here, but then I'll show you what it looks like with what you're probably used to. Okay, let's format this. Um, so we're going to, oops, we're going to print S. But instead of having this raw indicator, I'm going to get rid of that, that, that little R. Okay, so you see how it prints on two lines? That's because this was treated specially. It was like, hey, this is a um, this is a new line character, so it sent the text to to the next line. Um, I wish it had some special highlighting. Maybe it does if you have uh, double quotes. Sorry, you can't see that because the run button, but um, it doesn't really give it special highlighting. Let me print this, uh, or sorry, run this as well, and it should still treat the um, this character as a new line. Okay, so that's what that did. Um, so for example, even with that white space removed, it's it's going to put this G underneath the I, and that's kind of like what we would expect. If we were really writing this as a new line, we wouldn't have that space there. Okay, but now, 
if you put that R in front, now it's a raw string. This is regular text. Okay, and there it is. Backslash N gets special treatment. Um, if I wanted to do this without saying use the raw string thing, I would have to escape that. Okay, and now I get the same result. So again, if I don't escape it without the raw indicator, this is a new line character. In your IDE, it, it might actually highlight that to, to better indicate what it's doing. Okay, but if I want to escape it, there we go. Okay, and now it doesn't just escape this thing. It escapes backslash n. It's escaping that whole, that chunk of two characters together. Okay, um, we've seen sometimes like you can escape oops, um, a single quote like that. Okay, so that's just escaping a, a single character um, so that it, it gets printed out in this, this double quoted string. Uh, but the new line, it, that's like its own character together. It just takes two uh, characters that we see. Cool. So that's a, um, that's a raw string you can use. I'm um, not going to go into too much detail on runes and graphing clusters. Um, if we open this up, uh, you immediately see it's talking about like special characters and emojis. Um, these are just treated differently. Um, and see see that section for details but for now just know that um, uh, you can you can use uh, either like the um, the full expression to evaluate and, 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 and create an emoji or you might be able to just like plop in emojis let's find out can we pop plop in an emoji let's see control command space is that what does it let's just copy one of these oops there it goes it's finally popping up on my screen Okay, so there's our smiley face. Uh, let's print that. Does it print it successfully? Good. Okay, so there's there's the smiley face. Um, I think that the thing about this was something like like this laugh is really just this big long special character. Okay, so you could either you know use your keyboard or whatever to to insert that that actual emoji, or you can use this. Um, sort of character representation okay and it's supposed to pick that up as an emoji the laughing emoji let's see if it does it okay there's the laughing emoji I don't know if you can see that okay that's the laughing one we just saw okay so a couple different ways to do that all right Okay, so this is the last section um, in the language tour. Now you can go to the uh, the library tour and go into further depth, but just for this language tour, this is the final section about strings. Literal strings are compile time constants. Okay, so that means let me get rid of that. That means something like like um, excuse me, like this string here that whenever we compile the program, and in my mind I like to think of burning the program to a CD or putting it on a flash, uh, a floppy disk, of, you know, the old floppy disks, um, that when you compile that, um, this, this string on the right is a constant. Okay, uh, later when the program runs, it's going to assign it or attach it to this this bucket or this variable s uh, but right now it's a constant this this thing on the right side is a constant and as long as any interpolated expression is a compile time constant that evaluates um, sorry literal strings are compile time constants as long as any interpolated expression so i did a string literal right here, this is a constant. This whole thing is a constant on the right side. But if you're doing interpolation, which it does down here, then this literal string with expression, uh, with interpolation is only also a constant if it is composed of 
constants that match this type, these four types, null, numeric, string, or Boolean. Okay, so let's take a look at how this works. Um, this is this is important when you're doing work uh, even in like Flutter, where a lot of people use Dart, um, because you may find yourself with um, you know const or finals and bugs that pop up in your code. Get rid of that for a second. So it's, 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 it's important to, to know what's going on under the hood as you write your code because you have to, you can't just think at a high level like you can in Ruby and just say, okay, I expect this to be a string. Sometimes you get some weird errors, but uh, for the most part, you don't have to think about what the code's doing under the hood too much. Uh, in Dart, I've, I've found that you, you kind of do. Okay, so this zero on the right side is a constant. Whenever we compile the program, this variable um, is also a constant because we've said it's a constant. Okay, um, we've we've told the program, and the program knows that a constant num is going to be uh, the value of zero. That's it. Okay, boolean string um, even a const null. Okay, we can also interpolate that. Oops, let me do that before the string is terminated. Oops. A const null. All right, so this can all work. These four th types, these are kind of like the primitive types um, in Dart, and they can be interpolated into a string and assigned to a constant valid a valid constant string, and we're going to print that. Right now we have no warnings. It compiles. Okay, so we get zero true, a constant string, and null. So these are all the string representations of these these constants up here. So we we can do that. That's that's allowed. Um, the thing that the documentation talks about here is that these do not work in a constant string. Okay, so let's, let's take a look. So I'm going to comment out this constant scenario. Thank you. You've served us well. Uh, but for this one, this is the invalid constant string. Okay. So immediately, before we've even compiled the program, the Dart analyzer is telling us that constant variables must be initialized with a constant value. See, we're still we're saying that we want a constant string um, it just happens to be named invalid constant string. So like number here, a num, it's a variable. Even though zero is a constant right here, um, at compile time, these two things aren't linked together at compile time. It's only at runtime, okay, that, that, that it would try to do that assignment. And the analyzer is telling us ahead of time, like, hey, that's not going to work. Okay. Um, if we try to run this, you know, it's gonna it's gonna barf and, and say the same thing. Okay. So it, it, it's kind of interesting. Um, it it makes sense a little bit, like um, whether it's zero true or a string. The problem is this right here, this variable keyword. Okay. And I think whether you do variable or final for all of these. I don't think that's going to work even. Um, and the reason is because at compile time, a num is is not zero. It, this this assignment does not happen when the code is burned to a CD or put on a floppy disk. Okay, when it's compiled, um, this is like a future instruction to assign to link the variable name and the value on the right side together. So even though you're you're reading this and you and it looks like it's doing assignment, um, because we've said final or var, it's only going to do it when the program runs. Okay? The only way to say for sure that a num is going to be zero uh, 
when the program compiles is to put const there. Okay, and all of a sudden that warning for a num disappears. Okay, <clears throat> so you may be thinking like, all right, that's maybe I understand that, but why is why is a list not included in the number, the boolean, the string, and the null? Okay, let's let's take this, um, copy it, and put it up here. Uh, let's uncomment these original lines. Okay, so we're going to go back to valid const string, and I'm going to make it invalid a const list. Okay, now let's go back to printing our valid string. Okay, these guys have served us well, thank you. Now we only get this warning that says um, they must be of type bool, num, string, or null, just like the documentation said. So why can't a constant list be interpolated into a string? Well, there's a really good explanation um, at this stack overflow that I found. Okay, it says why, why a constant list can be used as a string literal when it can't be modified in any way. And that's true. Um, if we look at this like it is, this is a, a list literal, if you will. Okay, it just has some values in there. It, you can't put in new values, you can't reassign, you can't assign a new object to a const list. Um, and this was, um, it took me a while to read this and play around with it, but it, it, it kind of makes sense. Okay, um, so I'm gonna link to this in, in the notes. Um, for this video, but uh, I just want to play around with this real quick and, and show you why. So this this individual, James uh, D. Lynn, um, they put um, this explanation. Dart doesn't have a concept of saying that a method call can be evaluated at compilation time. Um, okay, I don't really understand that too much. Uh, therefore, Dart cannot guarantee that calling a method on a const object returns another uh, const object. Um, but see, I don't think we're doing a method call, um, but we really are. Remember that expression where it, it, it's, it's doing the two string under the hood? Um, you can do that two string call under the hood for these types, because a to string, it doesn't like that. That's the one thing I found about this. Um, if you try to literally do it there, or do it yourself here, okay? Here's my expression. Remember how I said you can do to string, okay? If you do it literally here with this whole const business going on, it does not like that. It only works under the hood in this scenario. Okay? So he says, um, Dart cannot guarantee the calling the method to string returns another const object. That includes the implicit call to string when doing string interpolation. Okay? Um, under the hood, it does kind of guarantee it, though, for um, null, string, number, and, uh, and booleans. Um, okay, so let's let's play around with this code that he has here. Oops, let's do it here. And format. Oops, what is going on? Oh, it's, oh, okay, okay. Here we go. Format. It's the entire thing. He he included the main right here at the bottom. So we have the math library. We have a um, an instance of random. We have a class, foo. Okay, now here's our program at the bottom. So this foo has a const constructor, and we're overriding the toString method. Okay, so instead of being an instance of foo, toString is going to return uh, this guy. So for example, we have an instance of foo right here. If we print foo, and I'm going to uncomment um, the toString method here. Okay. What do we get? 
Okay, we have an instance of foo. It says it right here. So the built-in toString method prints out instance of foo. When you have, um, so we have our constant instance. Um, there's our, you know, our reference to the class that we're making. Um, you know, if I say uh, oops, foo dot, does it not do that? Okay. So it's an instance of foo. Let me try something. It doesn't like that for some reason. What if I do it without this? What if I just say foo dot runtime type? There we go. Okay, so it's 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 a foo, right? Foo is a foo. Now, okay, yeah, you can't do that because uh, string interpolation versus I think it's going to be the same thing. Okay, instance of foo. So I printed foo literally. It called to s, or we can. This is kind of redundant at this point. Can you see why? <laughs> We just printed regular foo, and now we're printing the string interpolation of foo in, in a string, and it returns the same thing. Okay. Um, but as soon as we override to string, it's going to give us a random integer. 29. Run it again. 14. Run it again. 45. So each time, I don't like that number. 22. Um, so it's going to print... Um, foo to s okay now this can change every time so how can how can the um the call to string how can we guarantee that that's actually going to return a constant like like obviously we have a constant here okay um so at compile time uh it's i, I guess it's gonna it's gonna be okay that that like this is a constant representation of this class. Um, let's look at const list. So it's basically the same thing. It's just like multiple instances. Um, and it's just going to print out a bunch of different numbers each time. OK, 20, 26, 81, 70, 88, 97. So you can imagine const, I'm going to say in, invalid string. Because if I try to interpolate foo now, Oh my god. Like that. Well, look. Okay. Now foo in this case, this is the um, this is the instance of the class. Okay. An instance of a class is not bool num string or null. Uh, just like if we try to do a list. Okay, so this more closely resembles a const list. It is a const, but you can't interpolate it because, like, how can you say that your string is going to be constant whenever, when it compiles, <laughs> it's going to, like, um, it can't guarantee that, that this string is going to be constant because it varies. Um, and I think the point that this individual is making in this Stack Overflow post is that like these shenanigans, okay, that's a good word for it, you can override the two string method here. And I think you cannot do that for the more basic types. Note that this doesn't apply to implementations for some built-in types, null, numeric string, and Boolean. It says it right there, okay? Um, they're known to produce constant values. Um, I'm not sure about Dart not allowing the creation of derived classes. I don't know how to do that yet. Maybe you like subclass integer or something. Um, and, and so you can't subclass and, and override even in your own little subclass, maybe is what that means. Um, okay, so there's our shenanigans. Uh, really good, um, really good answer to to why this can't be done. So this is this is a good example of creating a const list that this can be a const. Okay, you can you can do that because like um, like these are going to vary at the time of compilation, but once it's there, it's it's going to be a constant uh, list. But you can't uh, interpolate it into a string um, because it's it's it can vary. Okay, 
So that's the um, that's the idea behind that. Uh, another video I recommend is this Dark Cons tutorial uh, by Resocoder. This is really good in explaining um, some of the differences um, in Dart with uh, Const and Final. Highly recommend it. I'll link to both of these uh, in the notes. Okay, so that is it on strings. Next time, we'll be going over Booleans. We'll see you there.